Good morning. Good morning. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's much better. Okay, guess what we have to do, ladies? All right, let me see if I can do this. I'm never very good at selfies. All right, wait a minute. Can you, I'm gonna do a movie because we have a whole room full. Can you say hi and cheer? That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Welcome. I am delighted to be with all of you today. My first question to all of you is, how many of you would like to feel like you command respect and you are seen and heard, yes? Raise your hand. Yes, you can do that. Very good. And how many of you would like to not only really feel successful at what you're doing, but you are thriving? Uh-huh. Okay, good. And how many of you would like some tips and tools and techniques to ensure that that happens? I hope I see every hand going up. <laughs> if you answered yes, to any of these questions, chances are you may have to make some changes to some of the things that you're doing, which often means that you have to step out of your comfort zone, and that is not easy to do. Neil Donald Walsh says life begins at the end of your comfort zone. When you step out of your comfort zone, that is when you truly get to grow the most. You learn some new skills, takes you to that next level. Now, some of the things that I'm gonna share with you today, no doubt, they sound familiar, but my question is, are you doing them on a regular basis? And if you're not, make today the day that you get back on the bandwagon. And I also believe that some of the things I'm gonna share with you are absolutely new, that you've never heard them before. All of you are subject matter experts, successful in your own right. But in order to move the dial on anything, it really is about stretching yourself. And I liken it to all of us being rubber bands. Everybody put your hands up, just about like this. There you go. And imagine you've got a rubber band around the outside of your hands. All right, stretch, right. Now, what I like to do when I work with people is I stretch you way out here. <laughs> You're not gonna live out here 24 seven, but if this is your comfort zone and you learn some new techniques and some tips and some tools, you can stretch yourself here and that's when you grow. And that's when you can make that change and have that growth. In my business and in any business for that matter, you need your communication to generate results. And in order to get those results, your communication has to be perceived as you intend, and so often it's not, for so many reasons that are in your control. Things that are in your control. How do you communicate? How do you connect? How do you engage, virtually or in person? And how are you going to take yourself to the next level? Preparation is more powerful than perfection. Preparation is more powerful than perfection. Now, Laurie gave you a few snippets of my background. Communication, presence, image, credibility, branding, all of these have gone hand in hand in my role as a journalist for 28 years. 20 of them were at WCBB ABC TV in Boston. I'm also a classically trained singer. Yes, and I sang semi-professionally for a number of years, and I had a chance to sing for Pope John Paul II. I've also sung with the Boston Pops under Keith Lockhart, and also the national anthem for the Celtics, the Patriots, and the Red Sox. Yeah, and also what's been fun, oh my. Yes, I was Miss Illinois 1979 in the Miss America Scholarship pageant. Look at that hair. It was the day when we used to do the perms, remember that? I'm very proud of the fact that those scholarships paid for every penny of my college education. And all of those experiences that I just shared with you helped me to know how to have presence and to be able to know how to present myself. Because today, each and every single one of us, no matter what our industry is, we have to maximize every opportunity we have to present ourselves in the best possible light. And that means internally and externally. 
I've certainly had the chance to do that over the last 10 years in what I call my fourth chapter, because I was a high school music teacher, then I worked in retail, then I had a 28-year television career, and now I have been an entrepreneur as an executive coach, which will be 10 years this October. I can't believe I've made it 10 years. I don't know how that happened. It seems very surreal. And I've loved the work because working with people either one-on-one -on -one or in workshops, it's transformational. I see the results in my clients often before they do it, but when they see it, it's the best feeling in the world. I'm also a keynote speaker. I have my podcast, Live Your Best Life with Liz Bruner. I'm on all the major directories. You can check it out. I also have some online courses on bruneracademy.com, including my flagship public speaking course, How to Be a Rockstar Public Speaker, and my first book, Dare to Own You, Taking Your Authenticity and Dreams into Your Next Chapter, was published in November of 2021. Anybody know who that man is? Jack Canfield from Chicken Soup for the Soul? Uh, he wrote the foreword for my book. Oh, it was pretty amazing. Forbes recommended it, and they called it a teaching memoir. And the reason I include that is because it's my favorite review that I got a teaching memoir because that's what I really wanted it to be. And just last month, Feathered Quill Book Awards honored me with not only a second place in the self-help category, but also a finalist in the memoir category. So the good news also is every single one of you is getting a signed copy today in your little swag bag that you're gonna get later on. And I'm grateful to have the opportunity to share more with you of my story. Presence is a skill. It is not a trait. What I mean by that is you can build on it, you can cultivate it, and you can learn how to have more presence. Why it's important and why we all want presence is because none of us want to be ignored. We all want to feel that we matter. We all want to feel that we are valued. We all want to feel that we are seen and heard. We do not want to be ignored. And if you do, well, I want to ask you why. <laughs> presence comes down to the choices that you make. And I did intentionally use the word choice. It's the actions that you take or possibly fail to take. It's the skills that you learn and you hone and you use, as well as your verbal and your nonverbal cues. And it's also about how you make other people feel. And when people feel good around you, good things happen. Anyone can develop more presence. Now, I didn't say it was necessarily going to be easy <laughs> because that means that we have to sometimes give up habits that make us feel comfortable. We have to stretch that rubber band. We have to do things that initially may feel uncomfortable. There's so much research as to how long it takes to change a habit. I've heard, you know, 30 days, I've heard 120 days, whatever it is, it takes consistency to be able to change something. But the presence that you bring to whatever role you have, how you show up, how you communicate, how you act, how you listen, it all has an impact on how you are seen and heard. It is hard to change. We have to have more than that momentary enthusiasm. But your growth in the financial industry depends on you depends on you investing in you. You are the most important person in your life. Learn to communicate, connect, and engage as the fantastic women that you are, but even more so, take it to the next level. Behold the turtle. He makes progress only when he sticks his neck out. Stick your neck out. Take a chance on you and invest in you. Thank you for the opportunity to share this with you today. I greatly appreciate it.